Welcome to edition number two of A Closer Look. I'm Mark Shine. He's Mark Miller, I think, but since everybody confuses us, we're not sure. How about the new graphic we got there, huh? Yeah, makes us look weird. Well, it makes us look like we're down <laughs> the side of somebody's 30 odd six. <laughs> yeah, that one especially. That one especially. Other than that, we're Don't back. shoot. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's, it's a great time of year. We opened up with high school football last year, last week. College football opens this week, the NFL the week after that. We've got the Falcons and the Buckeyes. Yeah, that's right. That's I'm, right. I'm a Buckeye fan. You are fan, a Buckeye fan. Not, not yeah. fanatic. Yeah. You are a BG alum. You're a yeah. Hall of Famer. Yeah. What's yeah. your take on the game? Well, you know, it, it's a mismatch. There's no doubt about that. I'd like to say our guys are going to go down there and, and win. Uh, I'd like to, for them to go down and compete. The, the one thing I would really like is if last year's Bowling Green team could play this year's Ohio State team. Still not saying they'd beat them, but Ohio, Bowling Green was very good last year. Ohio State got a lot of replacement parts. First game of the year, we might hang with them for a while. We're hoping for at least a, a, a good performance, good effort, and very few injuries. Mark, I saw the line today at 27 and a half. Mm -hmm. I thought that's out. Of, that's, that's too that's much. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot that's of points for week one. It really is. Yeah. Teams replacing a bunch of guys mm -hmm. in week one, I thought that was really high. Yep. Well, the goal, of course, of course, with a closer look is to mostly look forward. We want to look back a little bit to what happened a week ago. We want to review the two games that Mark and I looked at, yeah. feature games from a week ago. Mark, you go first. All right, Fort Recovery and Lehman Catholic. We thought it'd be a good game, and boy, it turned out to be a great one. 21-20, Fort Recovery got out of there. Will Homan had 122 yards rushing. He scores a touchdown as time expires. Of course, that didn't really tie the game. Jason Reesner had to come on and hit the PAT to win it, and then you know, I really think that games like this will be more commonplace for Fort Recovery because the last two years they learned how to win, now they expect to win, they find ways to win, and that's what they did in this game. What a great game. These, both these teams are going to be pretty good this year. Big win for Fort Recovery, though. Big win for Fort Recovery. I, my choice game last week was Coldwater at Kenton, and we were trying to figure out, answer some questions about both teams. How about the Coldwater Cavaliers? Dylan Toby, eight touchdowns, Mark. He, what, ran for five, threw for three, backwards of that, whatever. Had a great lead at one point. It was 42-7, to seven. Coldwater. And you made a really good uh, point to me about the quarterback position at Kenton. Is it the quarter, or excuse me, Coldwater. Is it the quarterback or is it a system or a combination of both? Well, they just keep plugging in new guys and they have great numbers. They run and they pass and, and certainly good athletes and they put the right guy in there and he works real hard. But I, in that system, I think you can really succeed if you're a pretty good player. Yeah, it ended up with 58-39. Kenton had a nice second half, showed some improvement. Here's the Heights making a pass right here that got knocked down. Some improvements yeah. by Kenton towards the, as the football game went along. They'll, they'll have some things to say about how things go in the Western yeah. Buckeye League. Let's move on to some of the other games that we had last week. Uh, how about last week's Grove and PG game, Mark? Well, again, an overtime game. What a finish, huh? 35-29, Columbus Grove beats Pandora Gilboa, Reed Steck Schulte. Not only did he score an 11-yard touchdown to bring it within one point and a kicker again, Logan Malsom comes on and ties it up. But then you go into overtime and Reed takes a 17-yard touchdown into the end zone, and that did win it because in overtime, no need to kick the PAT. We want to get, talk about our bright spot. This is a segment we want to do every week of, of something special that happens. We want to share with you guys, and something special happened. Not only a big victory for Columbus Grove at, against Pandora Gilboa, but afterwards, and this was planned by Reed Steck Schulte, he got both teams together and they prayed at the middle of the field. And the shot that Andy Lynch had on Sports Report was phenomenal. Guys with their arms wrapped around each other after an overtime right. rivalry game. That shows what high school sports is really all about. The scoreboard was forgotten just for a few minutes for something more important. How about that? That's a pretty cool yeah. thing to see and have happen up there. And of course, uh, Andy Schaefer, big fellowship of Christian yeah. Athletes guy, and we're glad yeah. to see that happen at that particular event. Yeah. Uh, another bright spot game last week was Ada and USV that we looked at. The Ada Bulldogs won 38 to six. As we see some of the highlights that came here, here's uh, some so shots of the Bulldog, the Bulldog fans. But what a great game for Conley to get things started. Five touchdown passes. Kind of an interesting stat, Mark, but sometimes you see this when you have these spread teams that throw the ball so much. A negative two yards rushing for Ada in the game. Of course, there's some sack yardage involved with that as well, but they threw the football very, very well. And obviously, uh, uh, Conley got to his receivers and things worked out very well for the Ada Bulldogs. A 38-6 victory for them. All right, we're going to look at Wapak and Bell Fountain. Everybody expecting Wapak to have another great year and no need to think they aren't. 
because Bell Fountain's really good. They went down there, a two-day affair, won 24 to 21. The largest lead in this game was only four points. Each team alternated scores all the way through the game. Tristan Meyer kicked a field goal to start the game. That was the difference in the game, and I think he'll make the difference in a lot of games this year. He is really a good kicker. Great weapon to have. Uh, Bath Delta St. John's played as well last week. Caden Sullivan rushed for more than 200 yards, three touchdown runs, threw a touchdown pass. They won. The Wildcats did 28-27 over DSJ, but Mark, that came down to a, a play. Mm -hmm. DSJ scores late. The question is for Coach Schulte, do you go for two? Do you go for one to mm -hmm. tie it up? Maybe you look at overtime. When you're a coach, you're on the sidelines, mm -hmm. you've got just a few seconds to make a decision. Mm -hmm. What are the factors that are involved as you make that particular decision? Well, the first thing I'll say is nobody knows what to do more than the coach. He knows all about what's going on, the flow of the game, what his team's makeup is. But some of the things, and no matter what he does, he's going to be the hero of the oh, goat, right? right? Okay. Yep. Well, there's a lot of factors. And one is, are you home or away? A lot of people say if you're playing at home, go for overtime. You'll win it in overtime. If you're on the road, win it and get out of there. All right, that's a factor. Who's your kicker? In the pros in the college, that's not a factor as much as in high school. You may have a guy that doesn't kick it very well. you got just as good a chance to go for two as kick for one. Momentum, usually if you've just scored, you've got some momentum. But do the kids have confidence that you can move the ball? Maybe you, you scored on a fluke play or maybe on an interception or something, and they haven't had success running it all day. Why are we going to try to run it in for a two-point conversion? Fatigue, are you guys too tired to go overtime? Maybe injuries. Maybe my quarterback just got hurt. I, I don't want to go overtime. But most importantly, do you have a great two-point play in your back pocket? Not one that you've run earlier in the game, not one that a regular play you're just going to grab, but before the game that week, each team should have a two-point play that they're going to pull out and have confidence that it will work. If you got one, run it. Let's try to win the thing. That's our question mark segment for today's show on A Closer Look. If you'd like to send a question into A, que a Closer Look and Question mark? You can't because neither one of us have email <laughs> accounts here and just see us at a game someplace and try to say what you'd like to hear us talk about at some point. Okay, Mark, how about plays of the week? You've got a great one from that Columbus Grove game. Well, uh, again, Columbus Grove and Pandora Gilboa. We're going to take a look at a screen pass. Here's Reed Steck, Schulte rolling right, throwing back. Great deception, great execution. Look at the blocking. Guys on the ground and then, of course, the guy with the ball. Get him in space and he can make a heck of a play as he makes some people miss. Let's take a look at it in slow motion again, right there. Linemen out in front. They are each got a white shirt on them. The running back makes a miss right there. The free safety has to make a hit. Big play, a beautiful screen pass. You and I were down at Lima Stadium the other night to, to see the Spartans and the Middletown Middies. We're gonna look at Jaden Walken, 200 plus yards. This is the one that kind of seals the deal for the Spartans. Puts them up 24, uh, 17 here. Tremendous run, great balance, great strength. Bulls his way into the end zone. Let's take a look at it again. He had a 90-yard touchdown run to start the game. Breaks a tackle, breaks a tackle, breaks a tackle. Great leg strength. Now he fights his way into the end zone. Big win for the Spartans at home. And thanks to that Jaden Walker play right there. All right, Mark, we have three college players now, NFL players, guys, trying to latch on in the NFL right now. And you've got kind of a rundown where they stand as we head into yeah, this Yeah, let's give you an update. The local interest guys. You know, the, the rosters in the NFL go to 75 at 4 o'clock today. So it's kind of a tense day. By September 3, they got to go to 53. That's a lot more tense. Then they re-sign the guys back to the practice squad. We got Zach Dysart from Ada. He's with the Dolphins as a quarterback in camp. Thursday's going to be the night for him. It's going to be a showdown between him and his competitor, Brandon Doty from Western Kentucky, and Tannehill and Moore, the, the starter and backup. They're, they're not playing at all. Zach's had a pretty good preseason so far, 10 of 1,517 yards. He also runs the ball well. That's a real advantage for him. Jared Pugsley, the big guy from Lima Seniors with the Kansas City Chiefs. They got 11 offensive linemen in camp. They go down to seven or eight. He's listed as the backup left guard. Probably be a swing guy if he's kept. Hopefully he will. And then Keith Winning from Coldwater, the quarterback, had good news today because his main competitor got cut. Joe Licata out of Buffalo. They cut him. There's only three quarterbacks on the roster. Of course, Dalton's the starter. A.J. McCarron most likely the backup unless Keith can have a great game on Thursday and beat him out. But things are looking good at least if they carry three and two if they bring him back on the practice squad. We wish him a lot of luck. Thursday's a huge game for all three of those guys. All three of them involved in our Legends weekend. Those are good guys. Yeah, great guys to have around. 
Okay, let's look forward to what we're going to see this week in week two of high school football, starting out with the Bath Wildcats and the Ottawa Glendorf Titans, Western Buckeye League mm -hmm. starting league play this week, the only league in our immediate area yep. that starts with play this week. Um, Wildcats, of course, won 28-27 over Dolphus uh, St. John's. Uh, Ottawa Glendorf defeated a team out of Canada, uh, North Clarkston, 38-13. Kaufman had two touchdowns running and two throwing, and we mentioned Sullivan a little bit earlier. Kyle Cutnile and I will be there to do that particular game on WOSN. And Mark, when you look at how that game rolled out, what might happen? The Wildcats have not defeated the Titans since 2003. That's also the last time that the Wildcats made the playoffs. Two of the three teams I picked to be at the top of that league, so go. something's going to happen Big very game. early on that one. The next game we're going to look at is Coldwater and Jefferson. They're at Delphus. Both of them 1-0, obviously. Coldwater gave up 357 yards passing to Kenton, but Jefferson likes to run it. They're going to try to control that game and keep Coldwater's offense on the sideline because you saw Dylan Toby is very, very explosive in his own right. Hunter Binkley and Brennan Auer between the two running backs of Delphus Jefferson, 422 total yards. That is huge because that's really one position, but two backs doing it. So we'll have to see. Is the pass game and the mix with the run with Toby going to take the upper hand, yeah. or is that run game, grounded out game of Chris Summers going to keep the offense and control the game? Our had a couple touchdown catches, too. Yeah. Not just ran the yeah. football. That's good for him. Delphus All can right. throw it a little bit. Let's move on to Macomb and Marion Local, two programs that have been deep in the playoffs multiple mm -hmm. times, especially recently. We don't know the success that Marion Local's had in the state championship games, and of course, Macomb as well has played well in the tournament. It's a big game. Macomb coming off a win over Carey, 45 to nothing, where they had 456 yards of total offense. Of course, we've seen their quarterback um, Malachi Abbott mm -hmm. had just a so-so game last week so did a lot of other things positively for his team. Mary Local defeated uh, Chaminade Julian 34-14 one of those interrupted lightning games. Mary Local won the game last year very close 24-22 and Mark I think that kind of brings up a question here. We see Jefferson we see playing Coldwater we see Mary Local and Macomb. Mm -hmm. These are teams that are going to be big conference games all yeah. year long making the playoffs going deep. Why are they playing competition like this early in the season? I think to get better you know, I mean, a lot of coaches don't really care if they get that win against subpar, you know, talent. They want to play the best. You want to get your guys thinking that they can compete and get you ready for the playoffs. You know, I think that's why. Get you ready for the league, win a league championship, make a deep run in the playoffs. So if you meet one of these teams, which they typically have down the road, you can say, hey, we can play with them. We can even beat them. The last game we want to look at is Grove and Lipsick. Uh, again, a rivalry game not too far apart. Grove's got the good run pass mix. Lipsick beat Harden Northern pretty soundly, 43 to 14, but they did give up 220 yards rushing. Expect Andy Schaefer and the Grove Bulldogs to try to exploit that, but this could be another really, really good game up in Putnam County. Let's look also at Arlington and Ada. Arlington lost last week uh, to Anna. They got shut out 28 to nothing. Had just 166 total yards. They gave up 428, perhaps a resurgent team in Anna. Ada, of course, with a big win over USV we mentioned earlier. Ada won the game last year 28-14. We'll see how that game matches up as well. Well, here's our broadcast schedule for the week as well. We'll put that up on the screen. Macomb, Marion Local, as I said a moment ago, I'll be at uh, Bath with the Ottawa Glendorf Titans matching up with the Bath Wildcats. And then Arlington, Ada, and Salina, Elida. Mark, it's kind of an interesting game. Salina with a tough loss mm -hmm. last week. Elida with an emotional win on Saturday night over Lima Central Catholic. And, of course, Elida playing their first home game. Yeah, and that'll be big. You know, the first uh, home game since the big accident. So, uh, And Salina has been very good in, in trying to reach out and, and uh, touch the kids on that team. So that'll be a good game. Well, we thank a couple of Ben's for putting our show together for us. We'll be back next week, not on Tuesday next week because of the holiday. We'll be on Wednesday night next week for the first showing. We'll be back with a closer look next week. Thank you for watching High School Football on WOSN.